Hi and welcome back. This video is a quick explainer for the recent interview I posted with Professor Klaus Wirth. So it's all about how mitochondria work and why their dysfunction might be the key to understanding long COVID and ME-CFS, based on Professor Wirth and Scheiben Bogen's most recent paper. So let's dive in. Let's start with the basics. Mitochondria are frequently called the powerhouses of the cell, but what does that actually mean? Well, imagine each of your cells as a tiny factory. Inside that factory, mitochondria are the power plants that keep everything running. These little bean-shaped structures uh, convert the food you eat and the oxygen you breathe into a molecule called ATP, which is essentially the unit of energy that powers just about everything your body does. Without getting too technical, mitochondria take glucose, basically sugar from your food, and through a complex process called cellular respiration, convert it into ATP. This happens through several stages. First, glucose gets broken down. Then, in a process called the Krebs cycle, more energy is extracted. And finally, in the electron transport chain, the majority of ATP is produced. An average cell might contain hundreds or thousands of mitochondria, but muscle cells? More like 30,000, because muscles need tons of energy. Your heart and brain cells are also mitochondria-rich for the same reason. When mitochondria work properly, you have energy for everything from thinking clearly to running marathons. When they don't? Well, if you're watching, you probably know all about that. So, moving on to Scheibenbogen and Wirth's most recent paper. They've pulled together pretty compelling evidence that mitochondrial dysfunction in skeletal muscles might be at the heart of ME-CFS and long COVID. For years, researchers have suspected mitochondrial problems in ME-CFS, but couldn't convincingly demonstrate it. But the recent breakthrough is that studies have found that while mitochondria and blood cells of ME-CFS patients look relatively normal, the mitochondria in their skeletal muscles are clearly damaged. An electron microscopy study actually showed visible damage to mitochondria in skeletal muscles of ME-CFS sufferers. And not just any mitochondria, specifically the ones located right under the cell membrane, called subsarcolemal mitochondria. This is a massive finding. And where it gets even more interesting, when they took muscle biopsies from patients one day after exercise, they found both muscle damage and signs of regeneration happening simultaneously. This suggests that ME-CFS patients experience repeated cycles of muscle damage from even minimal exertion. So what's causing this mitochondrial damage? The paper presents a compelling theory involving sodium and calcium. Here's how it works. When we exercise, our muscles normally get plenty of oxygen through good blood flow. But in ME-CFS and some long COVID patients, there's evidence of poor blood flow to muscles. This creates a problem. Without enough oxygen, muscles switch to anaerobic metabolism, which produces more acid or protons. The body tries to get rid of these protons by swapping them for sodium ions, causing sodium to build up inside the muscle cells. An MRI study confirmed this. ME-CFS patients had elevated sodium in their muscles, and these levels correlated with decreased hand grip strength. When sodium levels get too high inside a cell, another transporter called NCX, which is the sodium-calcium exchanger, starts working in reverse. Instead of pumping calcium out of the cell as it normally would, it starts bringing calcium in, and calcium overload is toxic to mitochondria. You could say this is a major aha moment. The damaged mitochondria they observed were mostly located right next to the cell membrane, exactly where this calcium overload would first occur. And unfortunately, once this process starts, it creates a vicious cycle. Poor blood flow leads to anaerobic metabolism, leads to sodium overload, leads to calcium overload, leads to mitochondrial damage. Damaged mitochondria then produce less ATP and more reactive oxygen species, ROS. These ROS and low ATP further impair the sodium pumps, which causes even more sodium and calcium overload, and the cycle continues getting worse with each iteration. I do need to quickly add at this point that if you're starting to get concerned about your sodium and calcium intake, don't. What you take into your body in terms of salt and milk is not going to affect what happens on the subcellular metabolic level. For a full explanation of this, please have a look at a, a quote I've taken from uh, Professor Klaus Wirth that is in the description. So this sort of metabolic cascade, if you like, explains why even minimal exertion can trigger post-exertional malaise in ME-CFS and long COVID patients. 
Your mitochondria are already damaged, so even small activities that healthy people wouldn't notice can tip you over into this catastrophic cycle. The researchers propose calling this condition acquired ischemic mitochondrial myopathy, essentially mitochondrial muscle disease caused by poor blood flow. One intriguing question is why some long COVID patients develop full-blown ME-CFS while others recover. The paper suggests several risk factors. Firstly, autoimmunity, particularly the autoantibodies against receptors that regulate blood vessels. Secondly, genetic factors affecting mitochondrial and vascular function. Thirdly, conditions like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome that affect blood vessels. And mast cell activation and ion channel dysfunction. These factors might explain why the initial vascular damage from COVID-19 heals in some patients but triggers this self-perpetuating mitochondrial dysfunction in others. My own personal addendum here would be that low-level viral persistence in tissues, residual viral debris or reactivated latent viruses could also all trigger the autoimmunity that starts and perpetuates this disastrous cascade. The good news here, and yes, there is some, is that understanding this mechanism points to potential treatments. The authors highlight a few approaches being tested. Medications that improve blood flow like Mestinon, which enhances cardiac output. Varicoguat, which promotes vasodilation and may improve blood flow. I have no idea how you pronounce that, by the way. And treatments that target autoantibodies, like immunoabsorption. Since the problem appears to be functional rather than structural, there's hope that the right treatments could break this vicious cycle. If you've been suffering from ME-CFS or long COVID with crushing fatigue and PEM, this research validates what you've been experiencing. Your exhaustion isn't just in your head, it's a measurable energy production problem at the cellular level. Those mitochondria, the powerhouses we talked about, are genuinely damaged in your muscle cells. When you push beyond your energy envelope, you're not just feeling tired, you're potentially causing more damage to these already compromised power generators. This is why pacing is so crucial. When we respect our energy limitations, we're giving our body the best chance to heal those damaged cellular powerhouses rather than causing more harm. Understanding the science behind our symptoms doesn't make them disappear, but it does give us a framework for making sense of our experience and hopefully for developing effective treatments. And in my next video, I'm going to be talking about one particular non-pharmacological intervention that also has some strong rationale for breaking this vicious cycle, and that is extended fasting. So until next time, be gentle with yourselves, because your overstressed mitochondria will probably thank you for it.